I remember my fourth birthday, and I remember getting the tin whistle, and I remember starting playing it. Do you know when you give the kid, uh, you know, one of these electronic games, they just seem to know what it is right away. Yeah. Well, I seemed to know what the tin whistle was about right away, so I just started playing it when I was four. And it just came to me like walking and talking, really, you know, which was great. And then I picked up the fiddle when I was about 10, and I've been at the two of them ever since, you know. <laughs> I think there's something special about a vinyl. The size of it and the packaging of it is marvellous, and you feel that you've got something really big and special. And there's this, this, this is kind of a psychological element to watching a, 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 an LP, as we say, spinning around. And my father had this little 78 player, you know, and I still have it actually. And there's, there's something, there's something extraordinary visual about it, you know. But I mean, I'm hoping that it'll actually come back to the, that, that CDs and LPs will be widely available and the big, the big shops will take them on again. And I'd hate to think that the digital system will take over. I know it is taking over, but I'd love that to change. We're still going out and selling CDs at gigs and that's where, that's where, our, that's where our main um, uh, f finance is coming from. Uh, but of course you can buy stuff online and everything like that, but I've never seen a penny of it yet. So I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Somebody has it and I haven't, that's for sure. But I guess it's, 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 what's, it's the way that things are changing. The old country pub culture is, is disappearing and, and, and that's a sad state of affairs. I don't know what can be done to change that, but certainly the supporting of traditional music and the supporting of live music in general, it's very important. And then of course that you, have the, uh, you can uh, look up at different radio stations across the world and online and, and tune into them. I mean, my daughter lives in, in California, Northern California, and she listens to, to to Scottish radio, she listens to Lothian, she listens to Claire FM um, all the time. So this is this is what's fantastic about the, about the internet as well. It's it's uh, it's it's a great source if it's used properly. So let's hope. The funny thing about f f fiddles is that one person will play. Say for example, I play my own fiddle now, and it'll sound the way it sounds. If somebody else plays it, it won't sound the same at all. And my fiddle has a distinctive sound about it. So it's the way I play it that brings that particular tone out of it, you know? One time, I'll tell you just briefly, I was in Washington, D.C., and I was invited in to play uh, the violin collection in the Smithsonian Institute. They had three Stradivarius, three Stradivari fiddles, right? The most famous violin in the world, I suppose. The most valuable ones, anyway. There was three there. And then there was a Gornarius, which was played by Fritz Kreisler, the world-famous uh, violinist. And I played the three Stradivarius fiddles, and I didn't like any of them. And then I played the Gornarius, and I loved that one. But they wouldn't give it to me. <laughs> Thank you very much.